Today I'll show you six defense mechanisms to help you deal with the psychologically volatile people in your life. This video will give you better skills at reading people and help you make better decisions about your relationships. It's Gabrielle and for over 12 years I've been a licensed professional counselor and relationship expert in private practice in Boulder, Colorado. And my practice is grounded in the science of what makes relationships work. If you like the relationship advice and tips for couples that you're learning in these videos, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button right here. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a like and share it. And please go to my websites, thepowercoupleformula.com for lots more information about how to build an amazing relationship and powercoupleseducation.com to stay connected. Okay, let's get into it. You may be wondering if you need to take drastic action to get someone out of your life if you're in an intimate relationship with them and they seem to be doing things that are just driving you up the wall or you just can't make sense of. You need some solid facts to base your decision on because here's the thing, people are confusing and deceptive in case you haven't noticed. People who have a lot going on underneath the surface often behave in ways and send out signals that are crazy making. Knowledge is power. I'm going to help you make some sense out of this and talk about the types of behaviors that you can learn to recognize that will give you a better idea of what's going on inside people and why they behave the way they do. This will help you stay right side up when you're around people who turn your world upside down. One of the things that you need to recognize in the way people behave is what psychologists call defense mechanisms. Now we've all heard the term getting defensive, by which we usually mean when a person reacts aggressively when they're being confronted with some truth that they don't want to acknowledge. Getting defensive calls to mind a person raising their voice, hands on their hips, staring down at you with a defiant look and denying everything that you're saying about their misdeeds. You know, the look your husband gives you when you tell him that he left the toilet seat up again? What you might not know is that defenses have been well studied in the psychological research. The term defense mechanisms was first coined by Anna Freud, the daughter of Sigmund Freud, when she noticed that patients would engage in certain types of behaviors to avoid dealing with issues they didn't want to face. Since then, the idea of defenses and even some of the specific types of defenses have become part of our mainstream vocabulary. Projecting, idealizing, and denying are all words that you've definitely heard of and probably used. But it's worth noting a few details about the specific types of defense mechanisms so you can recognize them in action. Since Anna Freud, there's been a lot of research and there's a general agreement that defense mechanisms are psychological processes that exist outside of our conscious awareness. They function to protect us from distressing thoughts and feelings that relate to our insecurities, our anxiety, and against objective stressors in our environment. Defense mechanisms aren't inherently bad. We all use defense mechanisms. Sometimes we need to laugh something off instead of taking it seriously because we're just so maxed out we can't deal with it right now. But at other times, defense mechanisms can create a ton of destruction in our lives, especially in our intimate relationships. Because the person using defense mechanisms is doing so unconsciously, this will often create the perception that this person is sending mixed signals being irrational, lying, or just generally messing with your head. To help you make sense of this with the people in your life and yourself, I'm going to give you a list of six of the main defense mechanisms. Number one, idealization. Idealization means putting someone or something on a pedestal. If you idealize someone, you see them as having more desirable qualities than they actually have. I see this a lot with couples. One partner is acting very badly in the relationship and the other partner says they're so wonderful, they didn't really mean to hurt me. Or they think that their partner is just so intelligent, wise, and can do no wrong. Needless to say, that attitude can lead to a world of trouble. It's a way of denying pain, suffering, and destruction 
of not looking it in the face so you don't have to deal with it. Defense mechanism number two, projection. We all have parts of ourselves that we may not like or we may not want to deal with. With projection, we're unconsciously assigning that part of ourselves to another person and imagining that they are that thing. For instance, maybe it's really hard for your partner to get angry. They don't think of themselves as an angry person and probably nobody else would think of them that way either. But they tend to see other people as being angry with them, even when they're not. This is a projection. It's literally like the projection of a movie camera. It's like you're watching a film of what you don't want to admit about yourself projected onto the other person. Defense mechanism number three, projective identification. This is a different kind of projection that can be hard to see. It can arise in a few different ways. How this works is that the person who's interacting with the person who's doing the projective identification starts to feel like they're not themselves. Like they might notice that they're feeling and acting either like overly maternal or maybe they're acting really aggressively toward this person and it's really out of character for them to act that way. They don't recognize themselves. Let's say you're the person who's doing the projective identification. Maybe you felt helpless your whole life. Maybe you were left to fend for yourself early in childhood and consequently you develop the attitude about yourself that you're incapable and helpless. When you talk to your therapist, you speak to them in a childlike voice that makes you sound incapable of taking care of yourself. And your therapist suddenly finds themselves trying to take care of you in a way that's completely inappropriate. For instance, your therapist might find themselves giving you all kinds of detailed advice about how you should live your life rather than helping you try to figure things out on your own. In that case, your therapist is essentially playing into this projection that you're making onto them. The projection of them being the person who can help you because you feel so helpless. Your therapist is becoming the thing that you are unconsciously assigning to them. This is why they call this projective identification because the person on the receiving end becomes identified with the projection that you want them to play. Defense mechanism number four, denial. Well, this one's well known and pretty straightforward. It means refusing to acknowledge what's true because it's too threatening to you. With denial, you're trying to bend reality to get it to conform to an internal need that you have. And fundamentally, this is the need for reality to be a certain way so you don't have to feel the pain of coming to terms with the way things actually are. I see this all the time with couples. In fact, there can be mutual denial where both people know the relationship is over. There's no way that they can continue. One person wants to have a sex change and the other person wants to be married to the person that they were married to when they got together. And yet, they just bought a house together. Now that's denial. Denying reality is only a way of setting you and your partner up for more and more hurt. It will come back to bite you in the butt. Defense mechanism number five, devaluation. This is one of the most painful of the defense mechanisms for those who are on the receiving end. Devaluation means putting people down, criticizing them, attacking them as a way of avoiding the anxiety of dealing with the issue at hand. We've all seen people like this where, you know, they spill some orange juice and you say, uh, can you please wipe that up? And they'll give you a list of the 10 things you did wrong this week. Devaluation is a way of defending against the pain of recognizing that, you know, maybe you're not as great as you thought you were. And this can be particularly painful in intimate relationships. Defense mechanism number six, avoiding. Avoidance is related to denial, only it can be much broader. Whereas we tend to deny thoughts or ideas, we tend to avoid many different kinds of things like feelings, conflicts, and being in uncomfortable situations. For instance, maybe it's too painful to feel the feelings of grief when your dog dies. So instead of letting yourself feel those feelings of grief, you just go out and buy another puppy immediately. And people do that with human relationships too. 
As the saying goes, the best way to get over a man is to get under a new one. But this generally doesn't work out so well because it's a way of avoiding your feelings. All those unresolved feelings of loss, sadness, and grief are bound to come back and hurt you sooner or later. Now that you have this list of defense mechanisms, the object isn't for you to perform a detailed psychological assessment of you, your partner, or someone in your life. The object is to understand that these are behaviors that create problems in relationships. These defense mechanisms tend to eat up a lot of energy and distract from the attention and focus that's really needed to be a competent adult. Being a good partner means understanding the specific problematic defense mechanisms that you tend to turn to under stress, as well as the ones your partner tends to use. Start to look at the impact of these defense mechanisms on your relationships, both as a recipient and the user of these defense mechanisms. Helping one another work with these defense mechanisms so that they don't distract you and send you down all kinds of irrelevant rabbit holes might help you feel more secure with each other, more able to deal with the practical issues of life and function together in the modern world as a team. Understanding which defense mechanisms tend to create the most problems for you as a couple zeroing in on those and trying to gain some kind of resolution or movement with them will have a great impact on many issues that you're struggling with, it, with as a couple. These defense mechanisms may be getting in the way of the two of you dealing with very important issues in your life. Everything from how to handle your finances to how to parent your children to various major issues that you might have about whether your relationship can even work at all. Bringing these defense mechanisms out into the open, having an open, compassionate conversation about them can go a long way to improve the overall quality of your communication and your relationship. So now let's hear from you. What defense mechanisms do you and your partner tend to engage in when you're in distress? And if you're not in a relationship right now, what defense mechanisms do you historically tend to go to when you're in distress? What tends to lead you and your partner, if you're in a relationship, to use these defense mechanisms? In other words, what happens right before you start using this defense mechanisms that tends to trigger you in this direction? If you're in a relationship, how can you introduce the concept of defense mechanisms into your relationship and use it in a compassionate, lighthearted, and collaborative way? Leave me your comments below. I look forward to reading them and seeing you in the next video.